Welcome to part three of the Gibson GA20 amplifier restoration. In this video, I'm going to go through and check the resistors and the tubes, clean controls, and whatever it takes to make this amp work the way it should. Hopefully, as good as the day it was built. So here we go. Alright, so here's where we left off on the Gibson GA20 amplifier. As you recall in part two, I already replaced all the capacitors, including the power supply filter caps. Now the original tubes are still installed, and when I fired it up in that last video, we had some noise, which I would expect. But the first thing that I want to look at is all these old carbon resistors that are huddled down here on this terminal board, okay? I'm going to go ahead and check them. I expect that they're going to be way out of tolerance because these are the real old one guys that don't even have the tolerance code right so you can see there's only three bands no gold no silver that follows it right so they're old and they've probably absorbed a lot of moisture and dirt and things from the past that have changed their value so I'll probably just change them all but we're gonna go ahead and check them and see where we're at alright so let's buzz out these old resistors for the fun of it I have my meter set on the 2 meg scale and I have some 220k resistors so here's one of them about 260 there's another one huddled back here just barely get to him there we go 234 got another one right here 241 and there's one up here here that I can see 276 so you can see none of those are at 220k all right now there's another resistor roid right here it's a 4.7k so I'm going to put my scale down the 20k scale let's see what he looks like here to here ooh that guy is over 15k and it should be 4.7k so I think you get my point. All the resistors are out of tolerance. So what's the best thing to do? Change them all. Yeah, they're kind of in a terrible location. A little bit of brain surgery. But we don't want this amp coming back. So I'm going to put all new resistors in. And then we'll take a look at the tubes. So the best way to perform this task is change the resistors one at a time. So you don't forget where they went because it is a little bit confusing and they're kind of down there buried right so it's going to take a little bit of effort to get them out so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to start over here and work my way across alright so you have two options you can either clip the body of the resistor out make little J hooks and solder in your new resistor if you don't mind doing that or you can take a little extra time and unsolder from the terminal board which is what I like to do I heat it I take an exacto knife I get under the lead I can bend it up and I can pull that resistor out put the new one in just like the original all right there's the first of the 220k's removed the new one is right there little metal film guy so all the new resistors are installed on the terminal board we still have the original tubes. I'm going to bring her up on a variac. Do a little wellness check here before we go any further. See if we've made any improvements. Still got the speaker hot wired, so there's high voltage right there. You hear a little hiss from the speaker. Ooh, a little pinger. Okay, now let's see what happens when I touch the tubes. So these guys, still microphonic. 6SL7 appears okay. There's our 6V6s. So let's start with checking the tubes. And I'm sure we'll find these two guys are microphonic. And hopefully the output tubes are still good. In that case, I'll probably leave those, and then the other tubes that he supplied will be spares. Alright, so we'll start with these two metal jacket 6SJ7s. 
they appear to be RCAs. We'll get some new ones in there and see if the microphonic sensitivity that we seem to have on those inputs goes away. Both of the 6SJ7s actually test pretty darn good on my B&K. There's no shorts, no grid emissions, but that really doesn't mean anything when it comes to microphonics. So let's just put in another set and see if that sensitivity goes away. Alright, I located some very nice new old stock GEs. We're going to install those. They've never been used and they check perfectly on the B&K. So I've got those new old stock GEs installed. Same deal, just brought her up on the Variac. I got the pots about midway on gain. Remember how we had kind of a ping, ping, ping when I was doing this? That's gone. So these are much less sensitive to vibration. Obviously the other ones are microphonic. Now, before I change out the inverter and the output tubes, I want to take a look at this thing on the scope. Alright, the scope is connected across the voice coil of the speaker. Go into it with the audio generator. We'll take a look at it on the scope. So that's good. Good sign. Now I want to check the output tubes and the inverter. And if they're healthy, I'm going to leave them in. Here's the inverter tube, the 6SL7 under test. You can see it has good gain, however, there is some grid emissions and a little bit of a short. So, we'll swap it out. So the RCA 6V6s checked perfect. I'm going to leave them installed. I have a new Sylvania 6SL7 inverter installed. And the amp is working super. Let's take another look at the sine wave. So it looks like this guy is ready to reinstall into the cabinet after I repair this wiring and get somebody over here to play it. Before I uh, complete the speaker wiring, which is now disconnected, the owner did send a grounded three-prong type cord that I need to install. Obviously this old cord is pretty rotted anyway and does not provide any protection from shock. So let's get that on. All right, so we have to solder this huge ground. How do we do that? Leaving. Yes, Sit it's back, Mr. Snozzly, the, the damaged soldering iron. He can solder anything. A lot of people wonder where ghouls come from. Well, they come from all over. They have just like that. Come from Portugal. <laughs> All right, so if you remember in part one, we found the big solder glob in the lamp holding assembly. Now I know why. So I'm gonna put this lamp in and watch the little rear plunger. It just pops right out. So obviously the spring is gone. So somebody tried to add some spring using a big glob of solder. So what I'm gonna have to do, obviously, is put in a new lamp assembly. All right, we've got the new cord installed. New lamp holder assembly is in there. Look at there. Lights up, just like it used to. I'm rewired to the speaker, tack soldered, of course. Gonna give her one more check before I put it in the cabinet and obviously heat shrink these wires. Here we go. There it is. A bit of white noise, that's a good sign. All right. Keep on a going. The chassis is reinstalled into the cabinet as well as the speaker. I had to extend the speaker leads, give it about a foot of extra cable so that this thing could actually be worked on in the future. But it's coming along well, and I just happen to have somebody here to give it a trial run. So let's take a listen to the Gibson GA20 after refurbishment. All right, guys, so I got Joby here, and he's going to test out the Gibson GA20 after the repair. So hopefully it's good, man. Yeah. Here we go.
<laughs> she's, she's a ripper. Bark, all right. Yeah, man, she's a ripper.